Good morning, friends. Happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, May 14th, um, and it is Blue Day of Spirit Week. So I've got my blue hat on, blue shirt. My room is blue, um, so that's a nice coincidence. And I hope all of you are also wearing blue. Oh, my watch is also blue. Look at that. Well, blue is also my favorite color, so this, this day was easy for me to dress up. Um, all right, so as always, before we get started with our um, read aloud today, let's sh let's see how to access the materials. Um, just like uh, the last few days, I'm going to put the link to the distance learning folder as well as the link to today's read aloud folder um, in the description below um, underneath this video. So if you need help accessing the materials, they will be there. Um, so we're going to go to the distance learning folder, go to first grade, go to read aloud, and then click on this week. And we're going to go to Thursday. Today is Thursday. And the materials will be right in there. So the article that we're reading today is going to be in there as well as the questions. That we're reading. Um, all right. So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to move over here. We're going to click out of this so the screen can be bigger, and we're going to read. So we have this article today. Um, it's called "Penguins Don't Need Boots." Um, that would be pretty silly if we were if we um, decided to go to uh, the zoo and we just saw that some penguins were wearing boots, but penguins don't need boots. So we're going to read about why today. Um, so. Before we get started with our read aloud, we know that this um, this article is going to be nonfiction. Um, you can tell from the cover that we're going to learn about penguins because um, we see some of the text features for nonfiction as well. So let's go through. I'm going to flip through the pages, and you guys are going to try and find the other text features that you see in this article. Because the first question is, what text features do you see? So I'll flip through the pages and keep track of the text features that you see. Um, go ahead. All right, so when it comes to text features, let's look. Um, we have on the first page, we see this big photograph right here, and we know that that is definitely a text feature that goes along with nonfiction text. So we've got a photograph. We have a label over here telling us what kind of penguin this is. Um, we have a title, Penguins Don't Need Boots. That's the title of this article. We also have headings in here, penguins don't need that, penguins don't need coats, penguins don't need goggles, and penguins don't need forks. And baby penguins don't need bottles. So it's a lot of things that we use that penguins don't use. Um, we see some more labels. We've got bristles right here. We have bolded words, that's important. Um, and then on the back, we have a diagram. So the text features that you should have written down are photographs, labels, titles, headings, um, bolded words, and a diagram. So you should have six text features written down. Those are photographs, titles, headings, um, what else do we have? Labels, um, bolded words, and a diagram. All right, now we're going to read through article and we'll go uh, and we'll, then we'll answer the rest of the questions. So back to the beginning. Penguins don't need boots. 
People need boots to walk on snow and ice. Penguins just need their feet. Penguins don't need the same things people do. Let me see right here in this photograph. These are emperor penguins. Penguins don't need that. As you read, think about how penguins and people are different. So that's important to think about because that will help you with your exit ticket later on. Penguins don't need coats. When it snows, we grab our coats and head outside. Coats keep people warm if it's cold. Penguins don't need coats. Many penguins live in snowy places. They have oily feathers to keep them warm. The oil makes the feather slippery. Wet snow slides off. Penguins stay warm and dry. So the oil on the um, penguins' feathers makes the snow and anything wet just like wick off of it. Like uh, when you guys wear raincoats or snow jackets, the water just comes right off. That's the same as the penguins' feathers. And this is a chin strap penguin because it looks like it has a mark around the chin strap right here. Penguins don't need goggles. Let's see actually if I can use this. Oh, yes. Penguins don't need goggles. Have you ever opened your eyes underwater? Things look blurry, but put on goggles and everything clears up. Penguins don't need goggles. They can see clearly without them. All they have to do is open their eyes. Then they can search the ocean for a tasty, what's the tasty? A tasty, let's move that out of the way. Oh, fish to eat. Then they can search the ocean for a tasty fish to eat. So penguins can see clearly under the water. They don't need goggles, like this gentoo penguin right here. Then penguins don't need forks. It's time for dinner. Take your fork and chow down. Forks make it easy for people to pick up food. Penguins don't need forks. They have bristles on their tongues. The bristles help them hold on to slippery fish. Then gulp, they swallow the fish whole. Wow, okay. So penguins don't need forks. If penguins had forks, it would be really hard for them to use anyway because they have flippers. So they, I don't think they'd be able to hold the fork to put it then in their mouth like this. It doesn't really make any sense. Okay. So they have, but they have the bristles on their tongues. So right here, we see that this penguin, the African penguin's tongue has these spiky things on it. Um, these are called the bristles, and we know that because of this label. Um, so the penguins pick up the fish with their mouths, and fish are slippery. So if um, they didn't have these bristles, the fish would just slip right out of their mouths, and they wouldn't have anything to eat. So they have these bristles, to help them hold on to the fish. Baby penguins don't need bottles. Baby penguins are called chicks. They eat in a very strange way. First, their parents eat foods like fish, krill, and squid. So these are all things that their parents eat. Next, parents regurgitate the food into the chick's mouths. Now, regurgitate is a big word, so let's see if we can figure out what it means. That means they throw it up. Eat up, chicks. Ooh. Okay, so let's let's unpack this. We've got the, the baby penguins need to eat. And in order to do this, the parent um, penguins, so it could be the mom or the dad, they eat like fish and krill and squid, things that you find in the ocean. Um, but the baby penguins can't do this yet. So the parents eat this, and then they throw up the food into their baby's mouths. And that is how baby penguins eat. Now, I know that that is not how baby humans eat. So that is one way that um, penguins are very, very different from um, humans. Um, and then we've got a little diagram over here. Three kinds of penguins. Use the chart to answer the questions below. So we're actually going to use this chart to answer some different questions, but we're, we should still look at the chart. Kind of penguin. King penguin. Little penguin. And macaroni penguin. So we can see how tall each of these penguins are and what it's like where they live, what the land is like. 
So a king penguin is three feet tall, a grown um, king penguin. When they get to their full height, they're three feet tall, and they it's icy where they live. The little penguin only grows up to about a foot. That's probably why it's called the little penguin. Um, and it's sandy where they live. And then we've got the macaroni penguin now, which I think is silly because this does not look like macaroni. Um, it, it grows up to two feet tall, and the land is rocky where they live. So now that we read the article, we can answer some of the questions. The next question is, what is the main topic of this article? Um, I'm going to leave the article open on this page, and you guys will take about 30 seconds to see if you can figure out the article. Or not the article, the main topic of the article. Go ahead. All right, so when we're figuring out the main topic, we're figuring out what the article is about and what the author of the article wants to teach us about. So we know that it's got something to do with penguins because this whole article is about penguins. Um, but we're going to be more specific than that because if we just wrote about, if we just said that the main topic was penguins, it could be anything about penguins. It could be like um, where they live. It could be what they eat. We do know a little bit about what they eat. Um, but that's not the only thing that we know about. So we've learned about penguins' different body parts. Um, we've learned about their, um, their feathers um, and why they don't need coats. We've learned about their eyes and why they don't need goggles. And we've learned about their bristles on their tongues uh, and why they don't need forks. Um, so the main topic of this um, of this article is penguins body parts. The main topic of this article is penguins body parts. All right, so the next question we get to talk about the regurgitating again. What does the word regurgitate mean? Now, regurgitate is one of those bolded words in this article, so we know that when we are looking for the answer to this question, it should be right in this paragraph, because that's where the word regurgitate is. So, take a little bit um, and read that section of the article and see if you can figure out what the word regurgitate means. Go ahead. All right, so the word regurgitate is over here. I'm going to read this whole section um, so that we can really figure out what that word means. Baby penguins don't need bottles. Baby penguins are called chicks. They eat in a very strange way. First, their parents eat foods like fish, krill, and squid. Next, parents regurgitate the food into the chicks' mouths. That means they throw it up. Eat up, chicks. Yeah. Okay, so let's figure out what this word regurgitate means. Um, so we know that this word is a tricky word because it's bolded, and right next to it, it says how to pronounce it. So we've got regurgitate. 
regurgitate. That is what the word is, and we have to figure out what it means. Um, so we've got next, parents regurgitate the food into the chick's mouth. So we already know that the parents have eaten the food. Now, in order to get that food back so that the, the um, baby penguins can eat, it has to come back out of the body in another way. And in this next sentence, it tells us what the word means. That means they throw it up. So they eat the food, they chew it, they digest it, or they don't chew it. They, they uh, do something with the bristles. Um, and then they throw the food back up into the baby chick's mouth. So that's very disgusting, very gross. But this is how penguins eat. Um, so what does the word regurgitate mean? It means to throw up food. So we can double check this answer by substituting or replacing the word regurgitate with the term throw, uh, throw up. So next, so instead of saying next parents regurgitate the food into the chick's mouths, we could say next parents throw up the food into the chick's mouths. And unfortunately, that does make sense, even though it's really, really gross. Um, so, but we do know that regurgitate means to throw up. Gross. All right, now we can turn the page. And we're going to use this diagram to answer the uh, rest of the questions. The rest of the questions are true or false questions. Um, and I'm going to make the screen a little smaller so that we can use the fun pen. So we're going to use the diagram on the last page. Um, and we're going to figure out if these sentences are true or false. And if it's true, we're going to write a T on the line. And if it's false, we're going to write an F on the line. So let's see. King penguins grow up to three feet tall. All right, so let's look at the diagram. King penguins, how tall are they? How tall are they? Three feet. Okay, so king penguins can be up to three feet tall. Does that match here? King penguins grow up to three feet tall. It does. So we're going to write in blue because it's blue day. Um, true or T. T for true. King penguins grow up to three feet tall. That is true. Let's go on to the second one. Macaroni penguins live on icy land. All right, let's look at this diagram. We got the macaroni penguins right here, and it lives on, ooh, it lives on rocky land. It's the king penguin that lives on icy land. So this sentence we know is false. Macaroni penguins do not live on icy land. They live on rocky land. Now, you guys are going to do the next two on your own, and we're going to um, go over it together. So the first one is little penguins are larger than king penguins. Um, get, put that in your brain. Little penguins are larger than king penguins. Is that true or false? We're going to use the diagram right here. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger. Excuse me, let's make this a little big so we can see. Ah, there we go. All right. Now we can really see it. All right. So what's that sentence again? Oh, yes. Little penguins are larger than king penguins. All right. You guys figure out, are little penguins larger than king penguins? Take about 15 seconds. <laughs> All right, so here we see that little penguins are one foot tall and king penguins are three feet tall. We know that one is smaller than three. So are little penguins larger than king penguins? Nope, they're not. So that is false. False. All right, the next sentence. Macaroni penguins and little penguins live on sandy land. All right, let's go to the diagram. Macaroni penguins and little penguins live on sandy land. Uh, see if you guys can figure out whether that's true or false. Go ahead.
All right, so the uh, sentence that we're trying to figure out if it's true or false is macaroni penguins and little penguins live on sandy land. So little penguins live on sandy land, so that's true. But macaroni penguins live on rocky land, and that's not. So uh, macaroni penguins living on sandy land is not true. And we know that if um, one part of the sentence is false, the whole sentence is false. So this is also false. So the answers are true, false, false, and false. All right, friends, now we're gonna move on to the exit ticket. So the question that you are being asked today are how is, how are penguins different from humans? Write about at least three ways that penguins and humans are different. Remember to use evidence from the text and write in complete sentences. So remember, that was a question that we were thinking about when we first started reading the article. How are penguins and humans different? There's a question right there. Now, each of these headings actually gives us a clue. Penguins don't need coats. Now, why would they say that? Because humans need coats, but penguins do not need coats in the wintertime. Um, and humans, we definitely need coats in the wintertime. So that's one way that they're different. And then we can say, using the details in this text, why penguins don't need coats. So for one example, you could say penguins and people are different because penguins don't need coats. Penguins don't need coats because their feathers are oily and water and snow just slicks right off of them. So that's one reason right there. You need to think of at least two more. And if you can think of an extra one, because there are four in here, then please write about that as well. All right, my friends, remember the folders, the distance learning folder and the folder for today's materials are in the description below this video. Um, but if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to reach out to your teacher. Um, awesome work today, friends, and I will see you tomorrow for Purple Day. Bye, friends.